very stable person before I became a writer, and then suddenly uh, I suddenly discovered this kind of I'm going to describe as the quill to, to kind of a form of perhaps manic depression. You know, the, some days when I'm writing, you're like kind of going, I'm like you're experiencing extreme highs and uh, and thinking they're really great, <laughs> and then the next day <laughs> you read back over what you wrote and the despair kicks in, and you start to realise that you're right. Johnny Gall, for us down here, it seems very far away and, and in certain senses the Wild West maybe a little well, it's bit. It's definitely less. the Wild yeah. West. <laughs> and that comes Banded through yeah, in your books yeah. as well, that, that kind of idea. So is Johnny Gall like a character for you or is it? Yeah, the, yeah. of course it is. You know, it's weird because when I was going up there, let, let's be honest, I, I hated the damn place and you know, I wanted to get to Dublin and, or New York or whatever and begin my life. Mm. And when I started writing the last place on earth that I thought I would write about would be Donegal but yet when I started writing about it it just started to happen on the page and what I realized now what was happening was that Donegal is really just it's a place of distance and you when you're writing you need to have um, the space to be emotionally distant from it and visually distant and all of these things that allow you to reimagine it as your own place I think if you're writing at the place you live in, reality starts to intrude. Oh, it looks like this. This it doesn't look like that. Whereas you need to actually be God, and you have to. You, have to, you want to be able to create your own thing, and to do that, you need distance. And so, the the only distance from any place I had was Donegal, because I've only ever lived in Donegal and Dublin. And yeah. um, uh, so Donegal suddenly took on this thing. And you know, the truth is, I love to write a novel about Dublin. You know, um, I really want to write one, but I know that I'm going to have to leave Dublin to do it. Do you think it's a particularly Irish thing that there's this urban-rural divide maybe in terms of so many writers would speak about, you know, oh, once I get out of this small town, yeah. or is it a, maybe a more universal I think creation? it's universal. I actually think it's about, I think it's about, it actually comes, starts off with being, feeling like an outsider. Most, almost every writer you'll ever meet thinks that on some level that they don't fit in. And so, you know, you, you're living in, you know, you're living in the small town Ireland, and you know, you know that you don't fit in. You know that you see the world slightly differently, um, and that you read books, and nobody else reads books. And so, uh, and then you go to the big city, and you know, you think you fit in, but actually, you realise that you just fundamentally never going to fit in as a human being. And I think it's that that kind of gap that writers, that wriggle room that you have, is actually what makes up a lot of writers. And uh, and so it's, it doesn't matter really where you live. It's, it's, it's actually about how you, you know, comport yourself and how, how you are as a human being. Do you think that landscape, you know, that that sense of um, timelessness that that has, you know, creates an energy in your work or inspires it and that the kind yeah. of all of us frenzied around the place? Well, you know, what I was saying earlier, which is something that occurred to me only recently, was that, you know, like if you're driving through the bog, uh, say certain areas of Donegal, you, you're driving through it, and you, know, you can be through it in five or ten minutes, and, and then it's gone. But if you were walking that, and and that was your daily kind of thing, um, and you know, Red Sky is set in the 1830s, and you know, the second book set in the 1940s, but even still, like, it's it's actually quite epic. It becomes it's much bigger, and in, in terms of time wise, than we think of it now. And so that um, what I liked about, especially in Red Sky and Morning, was that I was taking that American idea of the American mythic, the size of, of landscape, and actually realizing that Ireland contains that, even though we don't think it does because it's so small, but it does, it's there. And if we were all walking. And, and, you know, <laughs> exactly, you just, have to, you just have to kind of slow down maybe. And so uh, that became a big part of my writing, um, at least uh, you know, as, as those two books. I don't know if it's such a big thing for the third, but, um, uh, but what, what I found was this thing that it gave both both novels was a sense of time and space that might ordinarily not be there that when you're writing with the characters living their lives but you're using landscape to contrast and you, you do it in a certain way there's a certain way of writing about it but in that way of writing about it it gives you a sense of time and space that's far greater far more infinite than our own moments of our own lives well, I got a real sense of the American West mm. um, and you know it's kind of refreshing to kind of see Ireland in that scale because yeah. obviously to the people who were living here it was vast and it was yeah. much bigger than we might see it now. So do you think America influenced you in that way or do you think particular American writers? I'm definitely in love with 
uh, a certain bunch of American writers, and um, more so than I was ever influenced by Irish writers. I mean, you, I think as children, you, you know, growing up in Ireland, through osmosis, we just absorbed Joyce. I mean, you don't even have, the first time I read Ulysses, I felt like I'd already read it. It was like, I was kind of this kind of recognition thing going on, even though I'd never read it. And we all, you know, absorb Yeats, you know, and we absorb Beckett. And so we almost have them philosophically. And, uh, but in terms of the writers that really gave me that jolt of electricity, mm. that fire you up, um, it was, um, Certain writers, such as like say of, of the city, like Saul Bellow and Don DeLillo, have a certain energy about them. And then writers of the South, like Faulkner and McCarthy and Flannery O'Connor. And um, it's funny because I, I I've talked to um, a few um, contemporary American writers from the South about this, and they see lots of parallels with Irish writing and American Southern writing. There's this weary thing, eerie thing going on. Yeah, there is. And they love Irish writing. Yeah. And a lot of Irish writers love mm -hmm. American, so, go, you know, Southern Gothic. As yeah. They call it. And uh, I, I, I was just really, um, I think my sensibility was just attuned to that sensibility. Mm -hmm. I, you know, when I first discovered that kind of writing, I was like, this is actually the kind of fiction that my brain seems to be wired to yes. liking more than anything else. So when I started writing, I think that's, that came through, you know. I think you're so right when you say there is that kind of, you know, synergy yeah. between, you know, Ireland and America, and particularly the South, particularly. Um, and do you think then that maybe there's something to do with emigration, or do you think it maybe is where, how Ireland is viewed as a post-colonial, maybe, country yeah um, and maybe the south certainly as the only loser in an american you know landscape yeah. you know that they lost the war we lost well we won the war it's but we were question, the losers it's, it's do you think really hard to answer um i i was trying to nail this down with an american writer and, and we didn't fix it and um you know you could say it's possibly some kind of something very something deeper that goes back to shared mm. inheritance perhaps yeah um you know, perhaps something religious about our, you know, yeah. th there's definitely a kind of um, a religious aspect to it in terms of like, you know, just the use of the language. Um, it's, I find it, I actually, to be honest, I don't, I can't answer it. Um, you it's know, a big question. It, it, it could, it could, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, it could also just be an accident. Yeah. It could just be an mm. accident. I mean, we, we have, in terms of the post-colonial thing, we, the Irish do have that kind of, we, we've created our own language. That has made us very, very unique. You know, Hibernian English is a very, very unique construct of the English language, and you know, the American South definitely also has its own separate identity from kind of uh, broad official America. And so maybe, maybe as you're saying, maybe that's an aspect to it. Yeah. You know, do you feel yourself as part of that tradition then? That kind of, you know, that Irish American. Um, Kind of connection and that I can pretty much guarantee that students are going to be studying your work from that perspective yeah. as well that you're part of that you know maybe with Colin McCann um, you know that kind of transatlantic notion of Ireland. It's funny because I, I, I never really it's weird I never set out to write about this kind of stuff you know the, certainly a lot of the thematic stuff that I that like, like the black snow deals with what is it like for an emigrant to come back to Ireland, i.e. it's testing the myth of Ireland, what is the myth of the romance of Ireland like, does it hold up? And Red Sky, you know, tested the myth of the American dream and, you know, it looked at the people who actually don't succeed, the people who fall into the abyss, mm -hmm. who are erased out of history. And the weird thing is, is I never thought that, I never rationally chose these topics. I, I would actually have said to you, I have no interest in that kind of stuff. And yet, it comes from the deep and it arrives on the page. Everything in our lives is, 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 is a system of mythologies that we believe in, that we take as forgiven. And I think the writer's job is to test these things and see what holds up and see what doesn't hold up. And, you know, you also got to be a good storyteller, though, and that actually is more important than anything <laughs> else. You know, I do believe in storytelling. Brilliant. Well, you certainly are a master of it. Um, and thank you very much for joining us.